Hello, everyone. Hello, I hope this is working. Thank you so much for joining us on this live stream on the Santa Fe Symphony Orchestra and Chorus Facebook page. I'm just going to probably wait just a few seconds until we see some people joining. It's really hot today where I am. Um, it seems like like summer sort of uh, happened overnight, like some sort of switch was hit. And um, yeah, it's just, it's been pretty hot the past few days. All right, so I see seeing some viewers. So um, for those of you who have just joined, my name is Vladimir Fung. I'm a cellist and I am very excited that next season I will be performing with the Santa Fe Symphony in uh, May of 2021. I am 21 years old and I am currently quarantining with my family in Westboro, Massachusetts. That's where I grew up as well. And um, normally I go to school at the Juilliard School in New York City. And I just finished my junior year of undergraduate study there. Half of our semester this past semester went online and you know it's still a little unclear what's going to happen in the fall, but uh, I'm anticipating that this next year will be my last year at the school. And then hopefully I will um, go on to have a career as a performer. Uh, so, Question from Catherine, where am I right now? I'm in Westboro, Massachusetts with my family. Uh, Westboro is about uh, 45 minutes west of Boston. And um, that's where I grew up. My family has been here since 2008. And uh, before then I, I lived in Corvallis, Oregon. So um, Let's just get started a little bit with some questions. We have a few that were uh, submitted beforehand uh, via email. Um, so the first question is, if you could play your favorite piece for cello on your favorite stage, what would it be and where? Um, that's a bit of an intimidating question. Well, I'd say that that I, I have many stages that you know, would be dreams for me to play on, like, um, you know, of course, uh, all American musicians dream of one day playing on the stage of Carnegie Hall. I could, I could say that probably my dream would be to do the complete Beethoven cycle on the big stage of Carnegie Hall. I think uh, that would be, that would be amazing. Um, then, you know, there's some other phenomenal halls, like Walt Disney Hall in Los Angeles, and, you um, uh, Symphony Hall in Boston, which is kind of uh, has a special place in my heart because I grew up attending the concerts uh, of the Boston Symphony. And um, also, of course, some of the great European halls, uh, the Konzertgebouw, the Musikverein, etc. Uh, and as far as repertoire, I mean, I think that, of course, the box suites, all six box suites would be a, a real treat and um, the complete Beethoven cycle would be wonderful. Um, and um, then, of course, there's some concerti that I would dream of playing, like uh, the Borjak Concerto, the Elgar, which I'll be playing with the Santa Fe Symphony next May, um, and, and, and others. Um, so, yeah, that's a great question. I'd say there, there, are many, uh, there are many possible answers to that, you know, but there are many great halls and many wonderful pieces for cellists to play. Okay, another question is, how much blitz chess have you been playing versus rehearsal time during quarantine? Uh, so for those of you who don't know, one of my uh, hobbies is chess, and in particular, blitz chess on the internet. Uh, actually, it's funny, you know, quarantine has been a bit of an interesting experience because a lot of the things that I would do to sort of waste time and um, pass the time in, in normal pre, pre-COVID times, uh, I found that that my enthusiasm for them has waned a bit. So like, for example, chess, I, I would usually play um, 30 minutes to an hour a day on the internet, but I haven't played a game of chess in probably two or three weeks. It's just um, trying to explore other things. Uh, but um, I've been trying to keep up my, my practice uh, during 
during uh, quarantine. I know a lot of uh, a lot of my colleagues have taken this time to take a break from their playing, and I know some haven't uh, touched their instruments since their last concert was canceled. Uh, but I'm trying to stay on top of my game as much as I can, learn new pieces, you know, because I think this is such a perfect opportunity for musicians to to learn music that we normally don't have time to to learn and expand our repertoire, expand our horizons, uh, expand what we're trying to do and uh, perhaps work on some elements of our playing that have been a little bit left in the dust by the uh, by the the fast pace of, of of normal life, normal performing life, that is. Uh, it's another question. Ah, okay. Uh, it's a question in the chat. What pieces have you been working on during this quarantine? Um, I've been working on a few different pieces. At the beginning of quarantine, I was working on uh, the Bach first suite for solo cello, which was great to revisit after must have been six or seven years since I, I played it last. And uh, I learned the suite number one for solo cello by Max Rager, which was a piece that I actually wasn't familiar with before uh, just a few weeks ago. And uh, that was very interesting to learn. I've also been working uh, on the Elgar Concerto, which is the piece I'll be playing uh, next May with the Santa Fe Symphony, for those of you who are just tuning in. Um, that's a piece that I actually don't know as well as some of the other standard concerti in the repertoire, but it's a piece that I've grown to love very much, and uh, certainly, certainly one of my uh, uh, favorite favorite pieces in the repertoire. Repertoire. Uh, what else? Uh, I've been learning a little bit of the Weinberg Twenty Four Preludes for solo cello, a few here and there. Also, um, a wonderful piece for solo cello by Judith Weir uh, called Unlocked. It's divided into five movements and based on folk songs sung by prisoners in the American South. Uh, and Judith Weir is a British composer, but she went to the Library of Congress and did research to listen to these folk songs and then arrange them for solo cello. It's a very wonderful and moving piece of music. So yeah, that's, that's basically what I've been working on. Now I'm gonna try to, to learn some of the Walton Cello Concerto. Um, and maybe the Christopher Rouse cello concerto in the upcoming months. Um, yeah, but it's such a great opportunity just to kind of really dig into this repertoire and explore it without any pressure of performance. Uh, it's quite a gift, really, I'd say. Uh, thanks to all of you who are just joining now. Um, my name is Vladimir Fung. I'm 21 years old, and I'm a cellist, and I will be a guest soloist with the Santa Fe Symphony Orchestra next May. 2021. Um, so I'm, I'm very, very excited for that appearance. And um, I know it's probably difficult for all of us to sort of imagine a, a post COVID world. But I think if we channel enough collective positive energy and goodwill into um, dispelling the virus, creating a vaccine, um, then hopefully it will happen. And we can get back on stage sharing mu wonderful music with all of you and wonderful supportive audiences who love music so much we couldn't do it without you thank you and thanks to everyone who's uh watching right now uh there are a few other questions that uh were submitted beforehand um that i'm going to just read now there was a question who or what is your greatest inspiration i would say that i have inspirations in many different forms um and I find that I, I try to take uh, elements that I admire from various different people and then learn from them. Uh, if we're talking just about music and um, cello, I, I would certainly say that, you know, I, my, my biggest heroes are Mstislav Rostropovich, Yo-Yo Ma, Stephen Iserlis, Misha Maisky. Uh, these are great cellists, people that I've, I've learned so much from by studying their playing. And uh, I've, I've just been, inspired by their artistry and their continual desire to improve and um, and learn. And I think um, I'm always in awe of people who have sort of a seemingly endless curiosity for improvement and um, for, uh, for intellectual expansion. Um, I think that's probably the greatest 
the greatest thing that we can strive uh, strive for as musicians is a never-ending intellectual curiosity about the music, about ourselves, to look inward and see what we what it is that we have to communicate with the world through what we do. Um, and um, you know, I've also in my hobbies there also have been people who, who I admire very much. Like for example, the current world chess champion Magnus Carlsen is certainly up there. He has such a mind um, and. Uh, in a way, sort of a, a one-sided obsession with what he does, which is play chess. But um, it's that kind of uh, dedication that's quite interesting. I think a lot of a lot of people, certainly myself, uh, are inspired by that, and we have something to learn from that. Um, let's see some questions here um, from the Santa Fe Symphony Orchestra uh, page itself. Our board would like to know how it felt when you won the International Tchaikovsky Competition at such a young age. Oh, well, that's a very flattering question. Thank you for asking that. Um, participating in the Tchaikovsky Competition was, for those of you who don't know, um, was a, a dream of mine, actually. Um, I had dreamed of going to Russia to play in the competition since I was 12. This was back in 2011 um, when the Tchaikovsky Competition was for the first time ever being broadcast on the internet internationally. So I was able to follow all the performances and I was so inspired to see some incredible young cellists uh, just playing their hearts out on that international stage. And the excitement of it all really just, I was taken by it. And I made it a goal of mine that hopefully one day I'd be able to participate in the competition. And uh, my, my chance came last year. Uh, I applied in January for the competition, either January or or no, no, it was actually in, in March. I applied in March for the competition. The deadline was a little bit uh, close to the competition, actually. Uh, and um, I got into the live round and I traveled to St. Petersburg last June. And um, overall, the, the experience was, um, it was pretty exhilarating, uh, I have to say. I mean, I've always been sort of driven by competitions because I see them as such a wonderful way to push yourself to improve. And... Uh, um, really take the repertoire you're working on and polish it to a level that um, that we, we we might not normally hold ourselves to. You know, um, the concept of of taking a piece of music and really pushing yourself to get it to your absolute best is something that normally we don't have um, the patience to do. But when we're preparing for something as you know as important as as a big international competition, it can be very um, it can be very rewarding to go that deeply into the process of preparing. Uh, so, I, I mean, as far as the, the, the actual um, result itself, you know, I was, I was just trying to do my best. And uh, I think that um, given my preparation, I did the best I could. And um, I was very lucky and, and honored that uh, the jury awarded me the distinction of first prize. So since then, it's been a bit of a uh, you know, it was um, very exciting to, to meet new people and, and have new opportunities as a result of the publicity from the competition. But, um, uh, you know, I'm just overall just humbled by, uh, by the opportunities and, and gifts uh, I've been given. Um, so thank you. Thank you for that question. And thank you to the Tchaikovsky competition for awarding me the distinction. Um, ah, oh, Maestro Figueroa, thank you so much for your question. Um, he asks, uh, this is Guillermo, the conductor of the Santa Fe Symphony. Welcome. Who would you consider your main teacher or biggest musical influence? And have you played one of my favorites of all the Prokofiev Sinfonia Contratante? If not, would you want to? Uh, thank you for those questions, Maestro. Um, so I've had uh, in my life many wonderful teachers and i would say that every teacher i've had has been they've really all offered things to me in their own ways that uh, i'm just so indebted to um i would say that you know my first teacher uh was this wonderful woman named ann graby in corvallis oregon and she was a suzuki specialist i started with the suzuki method and um i think the foundations are something that you you know you can't you can't, you just can't stress enough how how important it is to have the right setup to have the right advice early on because those are the kind of lasting habits that will 
that will uh, determine your relationship with the instrument, your relationship to music, the way you think about music for, for years to come. So I owe so much to her, uh, Anne Gravy. Thank you so much for uh, teaching me so much and uh, keeping me honest and making sure that I push myself to be as, as polished as I can with every piece that I play. Uh, since then, I've had terrific teachers. I had another wonderful teacher in, in, in the Boston area after my family relocated there named Nancy Hare. She was, uh, she's also, she is also a terrific Suzuki teacher. Um, and then Emmanuel Feldman um, was another teacher I had in the Boston area. He was wonderful. Uh, and then uh, I would say my biggest, perhaps my, my biggest debt goes to Richard Aaron, uh, who is a professor of cello at the Juilliard School and the University of Michigan. And the reason I say that I owe a lot to him is because he became my teacher when I was uh, 14, uh, which was a very sort of crucial juncture in my development as a cellist and as a musician. And um, he really, I think he is the person who made me a cellist. He was really encouraging me to, to think in a rudimentary way, in a very fundamental way about my relationship to the instrument, practicing a lot of scales, a lot of etudes, emphasizing the fundamentals. And uh, I was reevaluating a lot of things in my playing at the time uh, between the, you know, the, the ages of 14 and 16, like the way I held the bow, I changed that. And my approach to the left hand, I changed that as well. Uh, so he, he really set me up. And I think I, I owe a lot to the way I currently approach the instrument to him. And uh, since I came to Juilliard, I've also been working with Timothy Eddy, who is the cellist of the Orion String Quartet. And uh, he is just an extraordinary teacher and an angel. And he has been uh, encouraging me to think more deeply about my personal relationship to the music, think more like an actor um, during performance to sort of uh, find the emotions within me and then express them through the text of the music. So he's been very, very important to me as well. Um, sorry, I'm blabbing on a little bit there. I want to get to everything. Um, you, the other part of your question was, have you played one of my favorites uh, of all the Prokofiev Symphonia Contratante? I actually have studied the Prokofiev, but not as in depth as other concerti. And I've never performed it publicly, either with piano or orchestra. So that would be definitely, uh, that's on the top of my wish list. And, um, you know, speaking of Rostropovich, who I just mentioned a few minutes ago, he was the dedicatee of, of the uh, final version of that piece. And um, he just... He really, his performances of his performances of, of that piece and his recordings are just magnificent, spectacular. The superlatives don't exist to describe how extraordinary they are. And uh, um, I think we, we owe our perception of how amazing that piece of music is to, in part to his extraordinary renditions of it. But yes, that would definitely be one of my, uh, one of my preferred Concerti to perform in upcoming years. I see that uh, Richard Aaron, my dear teacher, has just joined. Thank you for joining us. Um, all right, uh, there's another question. Uh, are you collaborating with others uh, during the quarantine? This is uh, Elaine Heltman who's asking. Thank you so much for your question, Elaine. Are you collaborating with others during the quarantine? If so, with whom and what pieces? Do you have a favorite collaboration app uh, that's a great question. You know, one of the things that's been toughest, perhaps, about quarantine for musicians is that we're we're no longer able to play chamber music with each other, and collaboration is what fuels so much of our creativity. And um, you know, it's been it, we miss it. We miss it for sure. Uh, uh, well, I've actually been uh, quarantining with um, uh, with a violinist. Uh, uh, a close um, family friend from Taiwan who uh, wanted to stay in the United States uh, during uh, the quarantine. And uh, we've had the chance to play a few um, duos together. But uh, that's about, about it. And um, in fact, recently I've been working with the, uh, this amazing app called the My Pianist app, uh, which is an uh, artificially intelligent uh, system that plays along with you. And uh, I know it's kind of kind of crazy to say it out loud, but it actually works. Um, you'd have your iPad or other device um, on the stand in front of you. 
and you plug in headphones to the device, you wear the headphones while you practice, and you play along with the app. The app will actually follow your timing, and there is a setting uh, such that it will, it will adapt to your timing and your rendition over time. So therefore, therefore it will become even more attuned and sensitive to what you're doing, uh, which, is, uh, which is pretty incredible. Uh, it's developed by a Finnish pianist, Juho Pokjonen, who is a marvelous and accomplished um, concert pianist in his own right. So the app has a lot of artistic integrity and uh, the way that the piano accompany, accompanies you uh, is a very natural kind of uh, uh, approach. Um, it doesn't feel at some sometimes it, it really even feels like a real person accompanying you. So I've been I've been working with that for some pieces uh, during quarantine, like the Elgar Concerto, for example. It's been a big help to play play along with that uh, to get a feel for um, to get a feel for the writing, the orchestral writing in the piano reduction. Um, let's see, can't wait. N Nicole Maniaci or Maniaci, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, uh, says, can't wait for you to join us. Well, thank you so much. I can't wait to come next May to play with uh, the Santa Fe Symphony Orchestra in Elgar's Cello Concerto. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. And thank you all so much for tuning in to this uh, live Q&A. Please uh, leave your questions in the comments. I will answer all of them. Um, this is great, and um, I, I'm I'm really really happy uh, that we get the chance to do this. Thank you to the Santa Fe Symphony for uh, proposing this live stream. Uh, Arton Valenzuela, I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing that correctly, asks, "Hi, Zlatomir. Hope hope you're good." Uh, I'm from uh, Mexico. How do you approach 21st century works? And how do you work with your right arm when you play all bow up and down? Thank you so much. Um, I will try to interpret the second part of your question. I think you're asking how I work um, more generally on my right arm, uh, maybe bow changes, how I'm, how I'm approaching that. Um, but the first question you asked is, how do you approach 21st century works? Uh, well, my approach to new music is um, generally, if there exists a recording of a piece, I'll try to seek that out uh, as the first thing that I do. Um, and the reason I do that is because uh, I find that, that it's really uh, enriching to approach other people's creative processes. And I, I can get a glimpse into those uh, if I listen to the recordings of certain pieces. Um, for example, if there's a piece maybe that's been recorded once, the only person that recorded it was the cellist, for example, for whom it was written. Uh, it can be very enlightening to listen to that recording because that recording, uh, even if it you know may not be uh, ideal or as as true to the score as I might think the 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 piece or performance of the piece, could potentially one day be, even if that is not the case, um, those initial performances often have a lot of wisdom in them because they, they sort of reveal a, a fresh approach and often collaboration with the composer as well. Uh, so I would say I try to seek out a recording uh, as early as possible and learn from that recording, take elements from that recording and incorporate it into my own interpretation. If there does not exist a recording, then I will try to just work my way through the piece and think of it structurally. Uh, I think every person, every performer has a different approach generally to the way, way they, they think about learning and uh, the process through which they learn something. But I discovered um, several years ago that I am very, my mind is very biased towards structure. So in order for me to understand something, I first must clarify the structure for myself. And uh, that's certainly no exception with new pieces. I will try to get into the mind of the composer and um, and mark in the score the structures uh, in the piece, the particular phrases, the larger sections, and then see how they all fit together uh, like architecture. Uh, and that will help me ultimately to uh, understand what I'm doing with the piece and you know where where, for example, the 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 peak emotional apex of the pieces uh, or 
you know, where how one section or one phrase relates to the next, whether it's leading into it or going away from it, or whether there are mirrors of one another. There are all sorts of possibilities, but uh, basically um, just clarifying the structure is absolutely the first thing that I do when I'm approaching a new piece of music. How do I work with my right arm? Um, well, I, you know, this is something that I've been, I've been working on a lot. I, I, I would say that, that uh, my, my right arm has been a source of preoccupation and a certain amount of stress uh, on and off for the past five years. I can clearly remember in 2015 when I was having uh, essentially a, a crisis, uh, thinking that my right arm had some fundamental deficiency that was never going to be addressed. Um, and, you know, it's, it's funny how, you know, we have these thoughts and I, I still have these thoughts sometimes, but, you know, somehow I still, I still end up playing the cello. I don't know. You know, it's, it's just, it's just funny to think that, uh, you know, even though you can be in the process of working on something so intensively, um, you might behind the scenes still, um, be aiming for something quite different. And that's kind of how I feel with my right arm all the time. You know, like one of the ways that I've been trying to think about it the past few years is um, this is an idea of my teacher Richard Aaron's uh, is kind of to expand uh, from the armpit area to, to sort of make the motion uh, from further in the back rather than more localized in the wrist uh, or the elbow. Um, but uh, you know there, there are other you know, there are other ideas that you know one has to balance like for example one of the things that I admire so much about Yo-Yo Ma as a player is that in his right arm, he has a lot of flexibility in terms of the rotation of his torso. So he achieves a lot of, he gets a lot of uh, leverage in his sound production by actually a, a swinging motion that comes from deep within his core. And it allows him to sort of draw the bow uh, from a, a deeper place uh, in, his, in his body from his core. And that kind of rocking motion back and forth uh, is also something that I've been thinking about, but you know, basically, basically, I to me it's all a mystery, and uh, I'm I'm trying to clarify it for myself and and see what 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 I can do to to constantly be improving and finding new ways to be one with the bow, one with the instrument in my sound production. Uh, are you doing anything else besides cello during quarantine? Uh, I'm doing a few things. Um, I've been playing a lot of video games, particularly in April. Uh, not so much now. Uh, for those of you, for those of you who are curious, what video games I've been playing, um, I was playing a lot of The Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild, um, which I think is a masterpiece of a video game. Uh, I was also playing some uh, Overcooked 2 and uh, Super Smash Bros. Brawl, or is it Smash Ultimate? Whatever the the Smash franchise game is for the Nintendo Switch. Uh, I've just been I've been playing that with my brother. Uh, that's been pretty fun. Um, the past week, I've actually been trying to learn uh, to code a little bit. I've been learning a bit of JavaScript, which has been interesting. Uh, my father is actually a computer programmer, so I've sort of been peripherally aware of this world of of, uh, of computers and computer science and everything, but I've never attempted to to learn deeply about it uh, or hands on. Um, so that's been really fun. Um, the past week. Uh, ah, okay. Uh, Arton Valenzuela clarifies, uh, how do you work your right arm so as not to lose the sound quality? Uh, I would say that um, the biggest thing is just to feel that the arm is naturally possessing certain uh, energy in the form of its weight, its gravity. So basically to, to channel that weight uh, horizontally and through the natural motion of your arm um, uh, and, and to, to sort of then go more locally to, to the wrist and the fingers to control how that energy is being channeled into the string. I hope that helps. Uh, thanks for that question. Uh, what do you play faster, blitz chess or the cello? Uh, that's, that's an interesting question. Um, <laughs> I don't know what metric we're using here. Um, well, blitz chess usually is, um, my preferred time control is three minutes per side. Uh, but I also 
like to play a lot of bullet chess, which is one minute per side. And there's also hyper bullet, which is 30, 30 seconds per side. But at that point, it, it becomes more of a, an adrenaline rush than an actual game with uh, logical thought processes. Um, and as far as the cello, I never considered playing fast to be my strongest point uh, in my playing. Um, uh, I need to practice slowly more uh, to build up my chops to play fast. So I, I would say chess wins in that in that regard. Um, um, there's a new question uh, from Judith. Uh, the fabulous photo of you on the brochure. Where was it taken? Oh, um, so thanks for that question. Um, for those of you who are who don't know, uh, I am. I'm very honored to be on the front cover of the season brochure of the Santa Fe Symphony Orchestra. And uh, the photo is um, of, of me was actually taken in Taiwan in, in a, um, uh, a town called Ilan, which is sort of on the northeast coast of the island. Uh, it's a very uh, beautiful place, um, almost, you know, almost dreamlike, quite idyllic and um, uh, tropical. And I was there on vacation last summer after the Tchaikovsky competition and uh, did several photo shoots there in the country, uh, in the nature, uh, in, in the natural um, beauty of the countryside. So that was, um, that photo was taken there. Thanks for asking. Um, um, let's see. Um, I was just notified, uh, Nicole um, is uh, the principal second violin of uh, the orchestra. Thank you so much, Nicole, for uh, for your earlier comment. We can't wait for you to join us. Thank you. I can't wait to see you all too. I hope you all stay healthy and um, uh, I'm sure that, you know, everything will work out soon and it's, I hope your organization thrives in, in the interim, but uh, I'm, we're all very eager to get back to stage and share what we love music with everyone. Uh, there's another question from Carl. Uh, do you prefer chamber or large orchestral works? Um, I actually, I would say I prefer chamber music because um, there's so much great repertoire for chamber music that involves the cello specifically. And, um, you know, like the Beethoven quartets, the Shostakovich quartets, the Bartok quartets, various trios by Dvorak, uh, uh, Shostakovich, Beethoven, Brahms. Uh, these are all gems of the repertoire that I, I really enjoy playing. And they, they mix sort of the element of collaboration with also the, the element of um, solo playing in, in the sense that you have import, an important role and you're the only one fulfilling that role. Uh, but on the other hand, I mean, there are many extraordinary works written for orchestra that, you know, just you can't imagine really um, a Mahler symphony uh, being as effective in any other sort of instrumentation because it's just in its blood. It, it needs that symphonic grand setting. Um, so it, you know, it depends. But uh, as far as what I do, uh, chamber music is one of my great loves for sure. Um, sorry, I'm just pulling up another question here. Uh, this is an interesting question. Uh, is there an orchestral piece that you have always wanted to play with a full orchestra, but have not so far? If so, what is the piece? Uh, there are various pieces actually that I've always dreamed of playing from the cello section. Uh, for example, um, the Beethoven Ninth Symphony I've never done. Uh, I've never played a Mahler Symphony actually. Um, and um, I've also really wanted to play in, uh, in an opera in the uh, cello section. I've only ever played half of Verdi's Macbeth in a semi-staged production of, uh, of the opera uh, when I was 11 or 12, uh, but I have such fond memories of it. I was just so passionate about the music. I would love to one day play in the pit. That would be really, really fun. Um, another question that was pre-submitted um, in, in, from the email, uh, from the emails, uh, what is your favorite food, and are you prepared for green and red chili in New Mexico? Uh, my favorite food, mm. uh, I would say, I love, um, 
I love watermelon. I love pizza, although I've been trying to cut down on that because I'm a little bit intolerant of dairy. Um, but I'm a big fan in general of unhealthy things. I love um, uh, potato chips, fries, anything that's deep fried, fried chicken, uh, tempura, stuff like that. Um, yeah, I have many guilty pleasures. Uh, <laughs> um, but as far as the um, green and red chili in New Mexico, I'm not sure I'm ready for that. I mean, I, I love spicy food, but um, I certainly have a limit. Uh, but, you know, what's life without the adventures? I'm sure it'll be uh, fun to uh, cross that threshold and challenge my, my mouth uh, <laughs> with a new level of spiciness. Um, another question, have you ever cried in a lesson? Ooh, um, I have, I haven't, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I haven't actually cried in a lesson, although I know of people who have, um, luckily my teachers have been pretty, pretty, pretty nice to me. Um, I would say, I, I guess when, when, mo when most people cry in a lesson, it's because they feel sort of inadequate about uh, their performance relative to the teacher's expectations. Um, uh, and, you know, that can be very upsetting for sure. Um, and I, I've certainly felt that I've failed to meet my teacher's expectations in the past and it's been upsetting. Um, but uh, no, I've, 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 I've been lucky. Most of my teachers have been quite supportive. So I've never, never cried in a lesson. <laughs> I can imagine that wouldn't be very fun. Um, Let's see, anything else? Uh, what's the next step for you? Well, I, um, I'm planning to just, you know, for the, for the time being, everyone is, you know, more or less uh, um, stuck at home and um, we're trying to still pursue what we love, music, art, um, and uh, share it with everyone. Um, you know, recently I've been, I've been pretty, uh, Pretty involved with my social media. For those of you who don't follow me, you can follow me on um, Instagram and Facebook uh, on my fan page. My handle is uh, at Z Fung Cello. So Z and then my last name, F U N G, Cello. And uh, on Instagram and Facebook, I post daily practice videos. Uh, uh, I'm doing a project, 100 Days of Practice, uh, to sort of give people an insight into what it's like for me to practice uh, on a daily basis. Um, just mostly a lot of slow practice. Um, and, um, you know, the upcoming months, I, I have some projects. Um, uh, yesterday, I did a, a live stream concert for the community of Westboro, Massachusetts, where I'm currently quarantining. And that was fun. The past couple of weeks, I've done a few other live stream events. Um, but I think it's, it's great to see how so many people are still so involved and so passionate about sharing what they do with the world. And I think that the music that we create is still, you know, it's, it's a force for healing people. And uh, this time has been, you know, many, so dark and painful for so many that God knows we need more beauty and light brought into the world. Um, yeah, but you know, so for the next couple, couple months, we'll just have to see how things unfold and uh, we're going to see how things go. And, um, you know, God willing, everything will will be resolved as soon as possible, and um, we can get back to being on stage and sharing things with all of you. And uh, yeah, well, anyway, thank you so much all for tuning in. Um, ah, okay. Uh, I am uh, going to stick around for another five, ten minutes, depending on how many more questions emerge. So please uh, feel free to. Right in the chat, uh, I'm seeing it here uh, as I'm streaming. So um, I would love to hear from you, uh, anything really. You can get personal and uh, politically incorrect. I'm okay with that. Uh, the Santa Fe Symphony says, tell us about the live stream with Carnegie Hall. Oh yes, so um, one of the most meaningful projects that I've had the chance to do during quarantine uh, was um, last, last week or was it yeah it was last week um last thursday uh so one of the great cellists of our time lynn harrell uh, unfortunately passed away at the end of april and he was just a titan of 
cello playing and American cello playing. And uh, he has left such an extraordinary discography and uh, legacy, um, both in his playing and, you know, with the people that he mentored. So um, seeing that his death, unfortunately, occurred uh, during the lockdown, um, Carnegie Hall created a, a project to pay tribute to him with their series Live with Carnegie Hall, which was streamed on Facebook. And um, as part of the tribute, uh, a group of 12 cellists from across the world um, came together and we had a performance of Klangel's Hymnus for 12 cellos, um, which was sort of edited and patched together. Um, and um, it was a great, great honor to participate in that tribute uh, for one of my heroes, Lynn Harrell, uh, and also to collaborate and play alongside some of my other heroes, Yo-Yo Ma, Misha Maisky, Alban Gerhardt, uh, Johannes Moser, and other extraordinary cellists who have inspired me. So that was, um, that was truly a, a very meaningful, a very meaningful uh, event. Thank you for asking about that. Ah, uh, Elaine, thank you for your question. Do you enjoy cooking? Uh, that's funny that you ask. I actually don't enjoy cooking, uh, and uh, I'm quite bad at it. Bad at it. Um, I've been trying to improve recently, but uh, you know, I I I don't know. I, I I man, I feel ashamed talking about this, but I asked for it. I said you can ask the politically incorrect questions. Not that this is politically incorrect, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm uh, I'm not a great cook. And uh, what can I say? I need to improve. I need to devote myself to it. Yes, uh, Elaine, thank you so much. Um, <laughs> thanks for your LOL. I appreciate it. Um, uh, I look forward to meeting you next May uh, when I come to Santa Fe. Thank you so much for tuning into the stream. Um, hi, Nathan. I see you joined just a few minutes ago. Um, Nathan Chan is a wonderful friend of mine and a brilliant cellist. Um, so uh, Catherine asks, so what else are you great at? Oof. I'm going to answer that as if it were ironic, which I assume it is. Um, I am terrific at sports. <laughs> I am terrific at cleaning. Um, you know, that's just really my forte. And um, organization, packing, I can blow people out of the water with that stuff. That's really, I, I'm your guy. Yeah. Um, I'm saying that all ironically, of course. Um, I am rather a mess in terms of, you know, organization, cleaning, stuff like that. Uh, I've been trying to improve recently, you know, for the sake of my family. Um, but you know, I guess everyone's working on something and, uh, that's it for me. So <laughs> let's see, what else am I great at? Uh, I don't know. Well, if I were to answer that non-ironically, um, I'd say one of my strengths is that I'm pretty disciplined when it comes to, to practicing. I start every practice session with uh, a scale and, uh, have a pretty rigorous technical routine. But uh, yeah, aside from that, I don't know how much. All right. Well, thank you all so much for tuning in. Uh, barring some last minute, very interesting question. I think I'm going to call it a day for now. Um, for those of you who tuned in kind of late, um, I'm Zlatomir Fung. I'm a cellist. And uh, I am super excited to be performing with the Santa Fe Symphony Orchestra next May 2021 in Elgar's Cello Concerto. And um, we're all very excited about uh, the upcoming season. And um, I, I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm, I'm so honored that the orchestra has uh, invited me to, to come as a, as a guest soloist. And I look forward to meeting all of you uh, wonderful people in the orchestra and the administration, and of course, the community. Uh, those of you who attend the concerts, we couldn't do it without you. So thank you for your continual love and support of the arts and music, uh, even throughout this difficult time for performing arts organizations. Uh, and I don't want to end on a 
sad note. So um, I'll just say thank you all and <laughs> be healthy. Thanks for tuning in today and um, see you next year. All right. Goodbye, everyone. Take care. <laughs>